Palo Alto and Ansible. Today I want to show you how to deploy Palo Alto objects via Ansible, how to do it with automation. So let's review our lab. I have my workstation with Ansible here and I will try to deploy uh, Palo Alto objects on those two firewalls. If I quickly have a look at the Palo Alto firewalls, I've logged in to one of those firewalls and under the objects we could see that we have a few options when, you, when we're adding the object, objects. We can add IP mask, IP range, wildcard mask, and fully qualified domain name. So those are the four options for objects on a Palo Alto firewalls. In today's lab, I'll show you how to add three of those <coughs> with Ansible. If I look at my workstation, where is my Ansible installed, I have a playbook that adding those objects. Let's review the playbook first. For my playbook, I have a three files that I require. I have the playbook itself, PA Ansible objects. I have a host file where I specify my two firewalls, 10.10.10.1 and 10.10.10.35. And I have Ansible config file where I do specify where is my host file. The reason is, is because I am in my personal folder where uh, my Ansible playbook is stored. You can see it's my personal folder under the documentation automation lab. Ansible by default, looking for, for the host file locating on a Linux machine in, if we have a look at the documentation, it is an ETC Ansible host. So if you run the playbook and you don't specify where is your host file, the Ansible look in this location. For this reason, there are two options. You can either do what I did, then you create an Ansible config file and you specify where is your inventory or your host file located. And that's exactly what I've done in my, in my Ansible uh, config file. So I specify that my host file is in the same directory as, as the playbook. The other option is when you run the playbook and you type Ansible dash playbook, you can specify dash I and then the full um, part for for your host file, but in my case, I've already specified in the in a in a config file. If we have a look again, um, how my folder structure is look like. So I have a config file which we are looking at the moment. I have a host file, yeah, host file with two firewalls, and then I have the playbook itself. In the playbook. I give it a name. I specify that I want to run against the Palo host. So that's a, both of those hosts in this um, structure. Um, if I go back, uh, I don't want to gather any fax and connection is local. Now, what you need to do is you need to call the collection, which is a Palo Alto network spanners. How do you get this collection? If you go and look at the, I will send all those URLs in the, under the video. Uh, prerequisite for running uh, Ansible for Palo Alto firewalls. Uh, you can go to the pan.dev and there is a very easy setup what you need for Ansible for Palo Alto. Obviously you need Ansible, then you need to install PanOS Python packages and the last thing is install PanOS Ansible modules and that's a Palo Alto network.panos. That's exactly the module we're calling here and then the Ansible knows that you like to use this collection and when you call the task for address objects, the Ansible know what to do. The next section, uh, which is specific for Palo Alto firewalls, you need to call the provider and that's the IP address and the credential for the firewall. So the Ansible know how to access the firewall. Uh, in my lab, it's very simple lab, so I will not be using any uh, best practices like using the vault and saving the credential in a separate encrypted file. For, for the easy of use, I will just put it here as a simple text. In my next video, I will show you how to, how to put it in a vault and ha have it in a proper um, secure manner. Now, so we have the words with the provider credential, we call the collection, and now we have the task itself. In my task, I have a five different tasks. Four tasks for creating the objects and one task for committing the configuration. Um, 
And the first task is to create a host and um, I'll give it a name, create object host. This is just for the reference. When the Ansible playbook is running, you see what's actually is happening. Uh, then I call from the collection uh, panos address objects. Then I call the provider. That's the variable to call those two firewalls with the credential we specify. I give the object the name. That's the name you will see on the Palo Alto firewall. So it will be object server underscore one with the IP address. That's the value. And then I give it a description, obviously option or the description. Also, you can add it a tag. Some uh, engineers or some companies are using a tags, for example, like, a, I don't know, from a production development or different, different kind of attacks. If you want to add the tag as the another value, you can do that, but the tag needs to be specified on the files already. You can't just add a brand new tag into the creating the object or it will fail on you. So that's the host. Then I have the range. Again, I'm calling the collection. I give it a name. I'm calling the collection. I'm calling the providers. You're calling the files with the credential again. I give a name. Now I have to specify the address type. I didn't specify the address type in the host because the host and um, a subnet are the default and the host and subnets are differential either if you are adding a subnet or you don't adding the subnets after the IP address. If you don't add it, subnets up after the IP address, obviously it's a, it's a host, it's a slash 32. If you added a subnet, it's a range. So when I'm creating, uh, sorry, it's a subnet. Uh, when I'm creating the range, I need to specify the address type is an IP dash range. Then I give it a value. It's an IP address from 150 to 160 and give it a description again. If I scroll a little bit more down, uh, now I'm creating a subnet. Same again, give it a name so I know what's running when the playbook is going, uh, running. Um, call the collection provider, give it a name, give it a value. And you can see I didn't specify the address tab here. If I go back and compare the subnet and the host, the only difference is in the subnet, I have a slash 14 and give it a description. The last one for the creating the objects is a FQDN. Very popular FQDNs these days. Again, calling the collection provider, give it a name. Again, I need to specify the address type is FQDN. If you see, if I hover here, uh, you can see you see that the options default the IP mask, exactly as we said, the IP mask is either host or the subnet. All the option options are IP net mask, IP net mask, IP range, uh, FQDN or IP wildcard. I didn't show you the IP wildcard today in the lab. It's exactly the same as all, all remaining objects. You just um, specify under the address address type IP wildcard. So I've specified FQDN. I'll give it a value. I'll give it a description. So we have four different types of the objects for the Palo Alto file. The last task is the comment the configuration. Again, I'll give it a name from the collection called the uh, Panos underscore commit firewall that will commit the configuration on a firewall and I call the provider again. So the, conf the commit needs to be done on both of the firewalls. The last bit is optional for creating the objects. You don't have to do that. You can uh, commit the configuration with a different playbook or you can go in and manually commit the configuration on your firewalls after you check that the deployment was successful. Deployment was successful. Now, let's have a look at how to run the playbook. So I call the playbook and the command for the playbook is ansible-playbook and that's the wrong playbook. Yeah, ansible-playbook and then I call the file, which is a pa-ansible-object.yaml. You can see that's the same name. If you're lucky enough, it will run for the first time. So it calls the Palo Alto playbook host is P1, P2, and it's creating the host, it's creating the range, it created subnet and FQDN. Now it's committing the configuration. That's the longest part because anyone who works with the Palo Alto firewall knows that a commit does take a few seconds, maybe a minute to complete. So this task will take a 
take a little bit of time to complete it. While we're waiting for the commit configuration to complete, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. It will help me to grow. Thank you. Now let's wait. Now we can see the commit configuration has completed for Palo 1 and Palo 2. Uh, if you don't remember what's the Palo 1 and Palo 2, if we go back and have a look at the host, that's a name for each of the firewalls I have in my host file. Um, so that's completed. Now let's go and check the firewall if the object's been added. I jump onto the mic management station and the Minta uh, was logged off. So log back in. Great stuff. Uh, I guess I have to refresh the configuration. We have a subnet, FQDN, range, and a host. So I think we have all four of them. Let's check the other firewall. Uh, do refresh. Yes, we have a Azure, so the subnet, we have the range, we have the host, and we have the FQDN. We can see the commit is gray out, so the configuration was committed um, as the last task um, in an Ansible playbook. So all works. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.